Welcome to this lecture on air bearings for contactless web handling and stabilization. My name is Teunus van Dam and I work as a mechanical engineer for IBS Precision Engineering, which is located in the south of the Netherlands. So this lecture will be on um, the use of porous media air bearings for contactless web handling. And uh, typically in, in roll-to-roll production processes for flexible electronics, uh, clean and damage-free roll-to-roll processing is critical for the yield and the lifetime of the end product. So, um, and typically the, the web handling equipment is a major source of uh, damages and contamination on the foil. So therefore, um, ideally, any contact with the film should be avoided. And therefore, contactless web handling is really uh, a nice opportunity to increase the, um, the, the yield of the product. So first, some introduction about uh, air bearing technology. Air bearings are already widely used in all kinds of precision applications, for instance, for semiconductor industry. And the working principle is actually uh, very simple. So a flow of pressurized air is forced through uh, a kind of restricting surface. And then if, if the surface is pressed against a flat counter surface, then an air cushion is formed, um, typically uh, 10 microns or more thick and um, that air cushion that allows frictionless and contactless motion between uh, the two components and well for this uh, restricting material you can either use um, a solid material with one or more tiny holes or orifices um, made into it or you can use a, a fully porous material and the difference between them can be seen on the next slide so um, here you see three types of air bearings. The left one is a round air bearing with a single orifice in the middle of the, of the surface. The middle one has also a single orifice, but also some distribution grooves to, um, the, to distribute the pressure in the, in the air film. And the right one is, is uh, one that uses a fully uh, porous material. And um, the graphs on top of the, uh, the schematic pictures they uh, represent the pressure distribution in the air gap. So as you can see, uh, when a porous material is used, the pressure distribution is far more even than in the other cases. And that makes it um, especially interesting uh, when we move to flexible substrates. Apart from that, uh, porous media air bearings typically have uh, also better stability and load capacity. So, um, in order to move towards uh, flexible substrates in roll-to-roll -roll processing, um, two types of air bearings are uh, developed. And the first of them is an air turn, which is basically just a cylinder uh, of which th the cylindrical surface is uh, fully made of this por porous material. And the principle is, is, is very simple. As you can see on the figure on the right, um, a film is wrapped over the surface of the air turn just as you would do with a normal roller. And then due to the air film between the film and the cylindrical surface, the film can be moved without contact and without friction in any direction. And um, obviously it's not needed anymore to have a rotating surface. So while with a normal roller uh, the surface is actually rotating, with the air turn the surface is stationary. So um, there's no bearings or other uh, moving mechanical components in this, um, in this type of air bearing. In order to uh, validate this technology for, for use in roll-to-roll -roll processes, uh, a test setup was developed where uh, a closed-loop film uh, was wrapped over two air turns. And one of the air turns is, uh, is used to create tension in the, in the web. And for this, uh, a PET film was used and also a steel belt uh, to compare the two. And a capacitive displacement sensor was used to uh, actually measure the fly height of the film above the air bearing surface, or in other words, the thickness of the air cushion uh, below the film, in order to validate that there's actually no contact uh, between the film and the surface. So the next slide shows some results. Um, the fly height of the film is typically between 50 and 200 microns uh, uh, over the surface. And um, in the bottom left figure, you can uh, see 
that the, the blue slices give an impression of the uh, of the height, uh, the fly height uh, for for different um, uh, parts of the surface. And you can see in the figure that there's actually no contact at any place on on the uh, where the air turn is supported, where the film is supported by the air turn. And what also is visible in this figure is that you can see a wrinkle in the film where um, the film is not supported. And then um, right over the air turn, you cannot see the wrinkle anymore. So it really has a kind of flattening uh, function. Um, then as a next um, uh, step, the thickness of the air film at a particular point is, um, is represented as function of the preload force. Uh, well, actually the preload force in the graph is uh, twice the web tension. So you can see we increased the web tension up to a level of 200 newtons for a 30 centimeter wide web. And uh, still then the, there was no contact between uh, the, the web and the air turn. And from the asymptotical uh, nature of the graph, you can imagine that we could increase the, the web tension even higher and still have no contact. So this really proves that contactless web handling is, um, is feasible on a, well, on a very thin air film. Then some general comments. Um, so the air consumption is typically less than 50 liters per minute for a 50 centimeters wide air turn, which is uh, to compare it, it's a factor of 100 or more lower than a typical um, uh, a hood, uh, the kitchen hood, which you use in your, uh, above your uh, kitchen stuff. It is upscalable to any size. Uh, in principle, and um, what was also done is um, is the electrostatic charging of the film was measured. So uh, we know from the field that typically uh, normal rollers add a lot of electrostatic charge to the film, uh, sometimes up to five kilovolts um, per roller, and therefore also the charge was measured before and after the film was uh, transported over an air turn, and no charge buildup at all could be uh, measured. So this is also a massive um, advantage of using an air turn over a regular uh, roller. And then something on wrinkling behavior. Um, from principle itself, due to the lack of friction in the, um, in the contact, there, uh, there will be no tension created in the lateral direction of the web. And therefore, um, this might be a good improvement also in terms of uh, wrinkling behavior. Um, so these were some general comments. Then um, the air turns are actually successfully used already in the field for more than a year. And they have been used with all kinds of substrates, for instance, uh, PET substrates in most cases, but also steel and aluminum films. And also trials have been done with uh, paper webs. And well, the first results are really promising. So it might be even possible to support paper webs um, with uh, a contactless C with an air turn. Um, and um, one kind of uh, typical uh, application is uh, this one, where uh, what you could see in the slide is a steering frame. So in a roll to roll steering frame, uh, typically you have two, uh, two rollers parallel to each other, uh, mounted into a frame. And by rotating this frame, as you can see in the drawing, uh, the, um, the outgoing side of the web is moving left and right. Uh, and this is normally used in order to uh, keep the web into a stable position uh, in the lateral direction. Well, if, um, if rollers, uh, normal rollers are used for a steering frame, then um, it might be necessary to have front side contact, so contact with the, the coated, the sensitive side of the film. Um, so to avoid this, um, a trial was done where the rollers were replaced by air turns and intuitively you might expect this not to work because of the lack of friction. Um, you might expect that it's not possible to uh, create any force on the web in the lateral direction. However, the results of that were really good. So um, in an experiment, uh, the reference position of the web was, um, was changed stepwise by steps of five millimeters. And then the, um, well, as a result, you can see that uh, the web was really following the reference position up to a range of about 20 millimeters, 
while uh, in, an, in the earlier uh, situation with the normal rollers, the range was only limited by about three millimeters. So the range was really increased. Also, the response to a step in the reference position was actually quicker than uh, before. And as you can see uh, in the picture on the right, the, um, the steps taken are really visible in the, in the roll after winding. So this, um, this clearly demonstrates that uh, not only passive transport, but also steering uh, without contact to the web is, uh, is really possible. And these were really good results. So this, is, uh, this was actually the first type of air bank, so the air turn, cylindrical air turn. And the second one is an, um, an air table, which is, uh, it consists of um, flat air bearing segments, uh, which are divided by uh, grooves in which a vacuum is applied. Uh, so the, uh, the air bearing sections, they actually, um, well, they create this air cushion on which the web is floating, but the vacuum grooves, they pull the substrate towards the, um, towards the surface, so that a uh, really thin and, and stiff uh, air cushion is formed. So currently this is uh, used a lot in, um, in flat panel industry, so to, to support rigid uh, glass plates. Uh, and now as a new application, this, this is uh, tried also for flexible substrates, where you of course would expect that the substrate is pulled um, into the vacuum grooves. Uh, and to, um, well, to validate this, again, a small setup was, uh, was prepared. So here you see again a stationary foil, which is um, uh, brought to, uh, to a certain level of tension and then uh, supported on the horizontal section by an air table. And again, in the same way as before, the, uh, um, the fly height of the film over the air table surface was measured using a capacitive displacement sensor. Well, as a first result, um, in this graph, you can see uh, the fly height at a certain point on the, on the film. Um, while the uh, air and vacuum pressure levels were, um, uh, were um, changed. So um, at number one, the, uh, the air pressure on the bearings was on, but there was no vacuum. So then you can see the foil is lifted very high. It's, it's basically just blown upwards by the, uh, by the air pressure. And then at number three, you can see uh, that's the situation where there was no pressure on the bearings, but the vacuum level was on. And then obviously uh, the film is just uh, pressed against uh, the surface, so uh, zero fly height. And then at number two, uh, both the air and the vacuum were on. And then the, um, the fly height is really stable at a level of around 40 microns. And the next step was uh, to, uh, to make a scan in the um, in the length direction of the foil. Um, and there you can see um, several runs were done uh, at the same level of, uh, of two bars pressure on the, on the air bearings. And the vacuum level was uh, changed between zero and 0.3 bars below uh, atmosphere. Um, so when there's no vacuum, of course, uh, the air is just blown, uh, the film is just blown upwards. Um, so that's the upper line in the graph. And then when the vacuum level is strongest, so the lowest line in the graph, there you can actually see the, um, the geometry of these grooves in your signal. So uh, the grooves are really, um, uh, the, the film is really uh, pulled down, mostly uh, where the grooves are. Uh, still, there's, there's still 50 microns between the, the surface and, and, the, um, and the film, so there's still no contact. Um, but uh, the best thing is in between, so if um, if some optimal settings are found, then the, uh, uh, the surface of the film is really flat. So uh, the purple line in the graph shows um, a setting where the flatness of the web was actually better than five microns over a length of uh, 55 millimeters. So this is really useful in some applications in, uh, in roll to roll uh, processes. Um, as a next step, the same was done in the lateral direction. And again, here you can see the, uh, the flatness is a bit less, but um, we could see that without any air table support, there were wrinkles in the foil that caused the flatness to be worse than 75 microns. And when the air table was used, there was um, over the entire width of the film 
this was improved to 15 microns, with the exception of the edges, which tend to curl up uh, a bit. Um, so in both directions, uh, the flatness is very uh, good. As a next step, the stability of the foil is, uh, is measured. So uh, for this, an air table is integrated into a uh, rolled roll line. And um, the air table supported a piece of the film that was between two rollers with a distance of about one meter apart. And then without uh, any support by the air table, uh, the vibrations in the, in the film, when the film was running, were uh, uh, more than 250 microns um, at one meters per minute, which is a peak-to-peak -peak value. And then with the air table support, so using both the pressurized air and the vacuum, uh, then these vibrations were actually reduced to less than 9 micrometers peak-to-peak -peak, um, with a running film, so still without any contact uh, between the, the air bearing surface and the film. And there was also no significant difference uh, seen between 1 meter per minute and 5 meters per minute, and there's no reason to assume that it will get worse uh, with higher uh, film velocities. And, uh, well, in this case, uh, the sensor was uh, placed right above the air table, and the same thing was done um, while the film was supported by two air tables with a relative distance of uh, 13 uh, centimeters, and the sensor was placed in between, and then still we could achieve uh, a stability of better than 25 microns peak to peak, which is uh, not as good as, as rightly above the air table, of course, but still very good, and this is useful in applications where you want film stability, but you cannot place an air table for some reasons um, directly at the point of interest. So also the air table is, um, has been successfully used in the field already. And um, because the air table really um, makes a, uh, a flat and stable film, this is especially interesting where you want to do uh, online or inline optical inspection in roll-to-roll -roll lines. So several trials have been done where um, the, uh, where an, an inline optical inspection step was, uh, was necessary somewhere in a, in a process. And then typically web vibrations uh, make it impossible to, um, for the equipment to have a, a proper focus on the, on the film's surface. And we could see that with the air tables, enough stability was realized to, um, to enable the, the inspection. And the same was done for, um, in one application for a printing process where you also want a st very stable web. And there also the, um, the air table proved very useful. And finally, um, uh, in, an, in a different trial, the air table was uh, integrated in a roll-to-roll -roll drying oven, where typically you want um, the film to be horizontal and uh, flat uh, over a very long piece of, well, several meters. Um, and there also the air table was, uh, is very useful. So, as a summary, um, with the air turn, a contactless uh, web transport is enabled on, um, yeah, on a very uh, thin film of air, typically uh, 50 to 200 microns. And uh, the air turns also um, uh, are able to realize contactless web steering and even improve the steering performance. And then with the air table, the flat air bearing, uh, a very flat web is, uh, is realized, so better than 5 microns on a smaller area and better than uh, 15 microns on a, on a larger area. And also uh, the web uh, can be made very stable, so vibrations can be reduced from more, to two f uh, more than 250 microns to uh, less than 9 microns. And uh, both the AirTurn and Airtable are already successfully integrated and used in the field. So finally, I'd like to um, thank the EU for uh, funding this research under the Clean for Yield project. And um, this was the end of my lecture, so thank you for your attention.